Talk. TNT. TNT. Welcome back to the Johnny Vedmore Show on today's News Talk TNT. My first guest up today is Karlin Bosenko, who is a psychologist turned independent journalist who covers the radical revolutionary far left in America. You can find her streaming almost daily on YouTube, X and Rumble, and you can access written breakdowns explaining the left at Karlin, that's K-A-R-L-Y-N, dot substack dot com or follow her on x at dr carlin b and i suggest you do how are you today carlin welcome to the show hey i'm doing great thank you so much for having me no i'm honored honored and i see all of the the many knitted shawls behind you and you made those yourself yeah Yes, I actually do a lot of knitting as I'm watching the far left radical socialists because I have to pass the time somehow. Sometimes socialism is actually really boring. <laughs> it reminds me of that um, wonderful gif of the cat knitting as he's watching everything on fire. Anyway, <laughs> that's really what our lives are like nowadays. So I have a few gay, lesbian and bisexual friends. But transgender, queer, and intersex people seem to believe I hate gay, lesbian, and bisexual people because I don't use the terminology which suits them. Specifically, what, why do we have to accept everyone's sexual pre preference in as one big bundle nowadays? Well, the thing is that, that the problem that most people have is not actually with the transgender or the asexual. It's with the queer Marxist, because queer is not about being gay. It's not about being trans. It's a far left political ideology that is fundamentally designed to destabilize what they call normativity. When you think of normativity, think of the norms that uphold like normal society. And so the whole idea of queer is that they don't want people to be normal. They want to push back on anything that most people do. That can go everything from queering appearance to queering relationships to queering, uh, you know, systems like, you know, like, like, like uh, capitalism in America and things like that. And so that is really the problem that most people have. And anytime you enter into these games where they're trying to get you to st uh, say certain words, that is fundamentally designed to advance their political ideology what why are we so suddenly obsessed with this murder of sexual ideology and political ideology is this is this really just some form of big psyop well, I mean, in some ways it is a psyop, but it's not it's not all of a sudden. It's one of those things that it started kind of slowly and then it hit us all at once at the same time. So in the work that I've done, I've actually started to uh, understand that queer subculture started to emerge in the United States in the late 1980s, the early 1990s. It was in like kind of underground anarcho communist like subcultures that unless you were in that kind of subculture, you didn't even have any idea that this existed. This continued in the United States up through the late 2000s thousands when you have the Occupy Wall Street era, which is which again about pushing a far left political ideology. But it really took off in the United States after gay marriage was legalized nationally, because all of a sudden they didn't have that problem anymore because most gay people in America just wanted to be able to get married and settle down and have kids and live normal lives. Well, when you're trying to destabilize a system by attacking everything that's normal, you don't want gay people to just settle down and have kids and have normal lives. Right. And so um, so they really started pushing this new kind of like far left political ideology after that. And that's why it seems like it came on so suddenly. But it was really a long time coming. Yeah, there's a this language has changed quite a lot. It's very scary. Of course, it's very Orwellian as well. Um, when uh, Penelope Pitstop, uh, Penelope Pitstop in the chat says, "My nan used to say she was feeling queer when she was unwell," and uh, and and a lot of the time it was like, "Ooh, that's a very queer folk," and it was meant to 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 say, "Don't go near them because they they're acting a bit strangely." So why why you is is the term queer so prevalent at the moment? Is is there a reason why that word in particular has been uh, thrust to the fore? 
Yeah, and it is important to understand that it used to have a different meaning, and that's actually part of the point for queer Marxists, is what they wanted to do was take this word that was being used as an insult or a slur, and what they call reclaim it, to basically take it and say, you know, yes, we are weird, we are different than you, and we don't see that as a problem, we see that as something that's a positive thing, and in fact, not only is it a positive thing, everyone should rebel against the norm, just like we have. It's kind of like a little form of self-validation in that regard, It's you have these people people who oftentimes they lack self-esteem, they might be socially awkward. In the United States specifically, they they target autistic people with queer ideology and especially kids in school because autistic kids, as a, a, a naturally being who they are, are not going to fit in. And then you target them, especially when they're going through puberty, when no one fits in when they're going through puberty, right? And then all of a sudden you have all these people who look at being queer or abnormal as a positive thing. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting that Everyone needs to subscribe to social norms because I don't necessarily think that that's true. But but what people need to understand is this is a deliberate attempt to subvert society. And so there are still a lot of people in the in the gay community, especially that see that hear the term queer and they use it kind of just to say, I'm not straight. And I think that's what makes this a little bit tricky, right? Because not everyone using the term queer is a far left radical. But a lot of them are. And I think it, it benefits us to be having these types of conversations where we're educating people about how the language has changed, why it's changed and what the true intent of it is, because it's really it's it's deeply harmful to our entire way of life. When you when you get into the weeds of it, they want to fundamentally destroy the, the societies we live in. Yeah, most definitely. So does far left radical ideology require the inversion of language as standard? Does it require it? In some ways, yes. Actually, they they have, I, I often tell people, uh, they use the same vocabulary as us, but they use a completely different dictionary than us. So it's actually very confusing for people when they first start watching socialism with me because they come into the conversation thinking that this whole laundry list of words means one thing. And to us, it does. But to this subculture over here that's actually running all the institutions in society that in America is in control of the K through 12 schools, they use the same words that we do, but they have completely different definitions. And so the first first part of trying to understand the radical far left is to really understand what they mean by those words. And when you understand what they mean, that's when you can start to understand why things are as crazy as they are. Yeah, question from the chat. Dark Commission, one of my favorite chatters, has asked, isn't this all part of the demoralization of the West, one part of the four-stage Marxist takeover, re Yuri Bezmanov? Uh, yes, absolutely. I, I have a little bit of a different um, uh, framework than Yuri Brezmanov, but certainly I, I, I agree with a lot of the ideas that he put forward. We've discussed him rather often on my channel. What I think this is, is I think that the left has four main goals at all times, and they're, everything they do is designed to meet one or, one or more of these four goals. Number one is gain as much power as possible. Number two is destabilize the system, which Yuri may have called demoralization. Number three is attack capitalism. That's specifically defined as private property ownership. And number four is usher in their Marxist utopia. So what the left has done in the United States is they've worked themselves into positions of institutional power where they can make decisions about things. They use those decisions uh, to fundamentally ca cause problems in our society. They do things that cause people pain. So they, they protest, they implement policies that are weird, that cause problems. And that causes people to go, this kind of sucks. What's going on here? And when people are like, this is a really bad thing and we don't want to live like this, they come in and they go, you know what's to blame for all of our problems? Capitalism. And if we just got rid of capitalism, then all of our problems would be solved. And then they go, how about we try Marxism now? Capitalism failed us. And now we have all these problems because of capitalism. How about we try Marxism? But really, they're the ones that caused the problems in the first place in order to have a reason to attack our way of life. Yeah, I'm not sure a lot of these people actually understand the ideology that they are responding to or that they're caught up in. So if Marxism is at the heart of what we now term queer activism, and how do uh, we best explain this to a queer activist? 
Yeah, I would actually, I would fundamentally disagree with you that they don't understand the ideology they're caught up in. And the only reason I say that is I've gone undercover with these people. I've been in the rooms with them and I watch their trainings all the time on my YouTube and my Rumble channel. So if people think that they can't explain the ideology, come to my shows and I will show you that they do explain the ideology all the time. But the reason that people think that is, you know, all these clips get surfaced online where someone goes up to someone at a protest and that person doesn't do a great job of articulating why they're there at that moment because a lot of people just aren't really good at speaking publicly. And a lot of people, when you stick a camera in their face, they don't really know what to say, right? But when you actually sit them down and they're in their private space, they can articulate this and they do articulate it all the time. I believe that queer Marxists, queer activists are indoctrinated into a cult. That's what we have to think of this as. We have to think of the far left as a cult. A lot of these people have been indoctrinated into this cult since they were five years old. And so do I think that we can convince queer activists to leave the cult? That's a really tall order. What I think we can do instead is explain to everyone that's not in the cult, here is the crazy thing that's going on in the world. Here is why it's happening. I don't like to demonize these people because, again, it's a sad thing to get indoctrinated into a cult. It's not a happy thing. But in order to give people that are watching this context to say, you don't want to join this cult, you don't want to buy into their ideas, you don't want to use their language, here is why they're acting the way they are, and we need to do everything we can to push back on their ideas. And if we do have opportunities to save people in the cult, we do it, but you shouldn't have that expectation. Yeah, excellent. Right, we're going to take a quick break for 30-second news headlines. You're listening to today's News Talk TNT. Here's a little news flash. TNT Radio News. We're the pinup boys and poster girls for free speech. We just don't look as impressive as Vladimir Putin shirtless on a horse. Yeah, 24-7, 365. We never stop sifting fact from fiction, misinformation from the truth. From government overreach to the latest on mandates, big tech censorship to propaganda gone mad. Listen to TNT Radio and get the news and views direct from our expert presenters and commentators anywhere you go. Ask Alexa or Google to play TNT Radio or download the TNT Radio app for free from the App Store or Google Play. Today's News Talk. This is TNT Radio. Welcome back to the Johnny Vedmore Show. I'm here with Carlin Borisenko, and we're talking about really queer theory, Marxist ideology, you know, the usual to be chatting about on a Friday. Now, um, we've got a few, we got about four or five minutes left, and I do want to ask uh, a couple more questions from the chat, because my chatters are such an intelligent bunch of folks. And Joel Allen says, will the far left get their way over the wording of paedophiles and call them minor attracted persons? Oh, that's a great question. And yes, they actually already are getting their way in this. And, and there are actually laws that are passed in the state of California specifically protecting minor attracted people. And I think in the United States, what's going to happen is eventually they're going to try to um, get them added as a protected class under the Civil Rights Act, which is why I want to repeal the Civil Rights Act. I think this is a horrible idea because it literally means if you have a minor attracted person, they could be a kindergarten teacher and not get fired. Wow, that is an yeah. unbelievable idea, isn't it? Oh God, um, it makes me hard to con. It makes it hard for me to concentrate on the next, uh, <laughs> the next question because all the blood rushes to my head and I feel like uh, going postal. So, uh, Dark Commission in the chat also says, just what does the Marxist, uh, Marxist, uh, Marxist, sorry, utopia look like, and how worried should we be if they succeed? Oh, we should be very worried. I firmly believe that we are we have about 10 to 15 years left in the United States tops. And what that's going to look like is you will not be able to own a home because the state will own all the homes. You will not be able to own land. You will not be able to own apartment rentals. You will not ha uh, be able to own private businesses. You will not have parental rights over your children. The state will basically be in charge of the raising of your children. You will not have freedom of speech. You will not have freedom of religion. There will be universal health care, no private doctors. There will be universal public education, no private private schooling, no homeschooling. And the scariest thing of all is the state is probably going to control the food supply, which means that they decide what you eat, how much you eat, and if you eat at all. Wow, that means that no homeschooling means your kids will definitely be in a classroom with a minor attracted person, as they call them. Uh, I can't handle that. Still causes me problems. Um, so 
why i i mean it's it seems like a no-brainer uh, uh, asking this question but why do you feel so passionate about this subject in particular I mean, I've always been fascinated with kind of dystopian things. Like I was very into like George Orwell and like all those types of books growing up. And and the thing of it is, is I discovered this real life dystopia that's happening all around me right now. And it became a little bit of an obsession for me to try to figure it out. But, you know, I don't want to make light of it because I, you know, I know I'm smiling and joking a little bit, but it is scary. And this is real. And this is happening all around us right now. And the thing is that most people just don't know what's happening. They don't want to believe it's happening. They don't want to look at it. That's why I spend so much time on my YouTube my rumble channel just showing people real far left training real far left events talking about their books what ideas they're doing in the world their protests stuff like that because people need to start to confront this this is really happening they are really winning they are very far ahead of us and we don't really i think have that much time left to be able to push back on this and so i know it's scary i know it's overwhelming but if we don't confront the problem then we are going to literally be living in an orwell book and i don't want that and i don't think you want that either you know, I, I don't want that, but I get a feeling looking around me that it's already happened. And, and unfortunately, the wheel keeps rolling over everybody, which is a part of it. You know, the boot treading on humanity's face uh, perpetually forever seems to already be here. Um, so a couple more questions, a couple more before I let you go. Um, do you think, and this is off, off topic a little bit, and it's something I've asked a few people, but does a vote for Harris equal a vote for World War Three? Does a vote for Trump uh, 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 equal a vote for war with Iran? Oh, yeah. I actually think that we're going to war whichever candidate wins. I mean, Trump kind of came out yesterday and and seemed to honestly give Israel enough like rope to assassinate him to go to war with Iran because Israel really wants the United States to go to war with Iran. And Trump came out and said, hey, if I get assassinated, Iran did it. You should go to war with that. But I'm like, Trump, you just told Israel to assassinate you. What are you doing? Um, And so and so, yeah, I think we're probably going to go to war either way. I think Kamala wants to go to war with Russia. Trump wants to go to war war with Iran. J.D. Vance, who is Trump's running mate, um, has already came out. He came out and said in his first interview he wants to use the big bombs on Iran and not the little bombs. And so it's a pretty scary time. And I think that I personally started as an anti-war activist, uh, you know, back when I was in college. And I think it's incumbent upon everyone to be speaking out against this. And, um, you know, sometimes we have to join. So like the left is uh, is completely against the war, too. And it's a little uncomfortable sometimes to be on the same side as the left. But on this issue, we're going to cause World War Three, and that should scare everyone. Oh, yes, it should. It should. Okay, one last question just before you go. Uh, you're starting a new show next month, I believe. Uh, what's it called? And tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I'm going to be starting a show called Something Controversial. It's going to be an exclusive on my Rumble channel where I'm basically asking people to send me the most controversial videos on the internet from all the banned topics that I'm not supposed to talk about. Things like the Holocaust and Hitler and, uh, you know, 9-11 conspiracies and moon landing conspiracies and flat earth and basically every topic that I could get canceled for talking about. I'm going to watch the videos about them on my Rumble channel and learn about them. And, you know, if the world is ending anyway, I might as well go out with a bang, I suppose. So people can subscribe to my rumble channel it's rumble.com slash carlin if they want to get involved with that carlin you have been awesome today and i can see in the chat everybody thinks you're great so keep up the good work keep going forward and uh come back on the show sometime will you anytime thank you for having me excellent thank you you're listening to today's news talk tnt